As much as most RPGs are focused on giving players freedom to explore their lush world, sometimes developers aren't strictly focused on catering to the player's desires and will get a little more daring. To that end, some RPGs tinker with player expectations in ways that aren't merely cheeky and mischievous, but generally ruthless and even harsh. I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 more cruel tricks video games played on RPG players. Number 10. Make a horrible choice at the start of the game. Fable 3. Generally speaking, most video games save their agonising player choices for the very end of the story, but Fable 3 said screw that and forced you to make a gut-wrenching decision in its opening 15 minutes. Fable 3's protagonist is the younger brother of Logan, the despotic king of Albion, and at the start of the game, after intruding upon one of his own war room meetings, Logan punishes you by forcing you to make a horrific choice. Logan is either going to execute your love interest or the leaders of the protest against his corrupt rule, and you have to pick whom. It's a genuinely tough choice choice with no right answer and to rub salt into the wound if you take too long to choose, Logan will just execute them all. Given that most players rightly expect to be eased into the tricky decision making in any video game, Fable 3 surprised by instead kicking things off with a stomach churning jolt. Number 9. Digimon Die of Old Age – Digimon World if you played Digimon World as a kid, there's a good chance you ended up getting pretty attached to your digital monsters, enough that you were left thoroughly traumatised when they started dying of old age. That's right, while you might have expected to be able to hold on to your Digimon forever in the game, much like you can with the likes of Pokemon, they have a finite lifespan and eventually perish no matter what you do. You're forced to watch as their life force shatters and they're transformed into an orb of brilliant light before being informed that the Digimon has faded away. It's a genuinely heartbreaking revelation revelation, though it is somewhat cushioned by the fact that dead Digimon also give birth to a Digitama, an egg which allows them to be reborn, albeit with players having to raise them to adulthood all over again. It's a lesson in the ephemeral nature of existence that nobody expected to learn while playing a Digimon game of all things. Number 8. The Zodiac Sphere is unobtainable if you open certain chests. Final Fantasy XII. In the original release of Final Fantasy XII, the game's strongest weapon was the Zodiac Spear, but acquiring it was so much of a pee take that most players surely didn't deem it worth the hassle. In fact, once you found out about it, likely it was far too late. To get the spear, you needed to not open four specific chests throughout the game, after which it could be found among a collection of 16 chests at the Necrohole of Nabudis. It goes without saying that this is impossible to pull off without incredible luck or a strategy guide, enough that many fans maintain to this very day that Square Enix did it to try and sell more strategy guides. Players who'd already poured countless hours into the game and were locked out of obtaining the Zodiac Spear due to opening one of the chests were naturally incredibly upset about it all, such that for the Zodiac Age re-release, Square Enix made it much easier to pick up. Number 7. Losing the ability to hug – Pathologic 2 Survival horror RPG Pathologic 2 imposes penalties on the player every single time they die, courtesy of Supernatural Theatre Director Mark Immortal. These penalties include debuffs like reduced immunity and max health, which can only be easily removed by restarting the game, yet one of the earliest penalties you receive seems hilariously frivolous, that is, until it isn't. One of your first deaths will see you punished with the inability to hug, which sounds like a joke given that hugging isn't an apparent gameplay mechanic. But as it turns out, this pays off quite ruthlessly near the very end of the game when a crestfallen Lara falls into a pit of despair, believing herself to be useless and requiring comfort. One of the player options is the ability to give Lara a hug, but if you've received the aforementioned penalty, you'll be denied the opportunity. Completing a so-called hug run of the game, where you keep your death count low enough to retain your ability to hug Lara, is a major badge of honour among Pathologic 2 players and a seriously harsh challenge on the part of developers Icepick Lodge. Number 6. Save the Sewids and they kill people later. Xenoblade Chronicles X Xenoblade Chronicles X offers up one hell of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation in its mission City Saviors, where a young man by the name of Carl tasks you with killing five sewids, basically pig-like creatures, in Primordia's Westgate Plain. Carl isn't particularly enthusiastic about the mission himself, and upon arriving in the cave and realising the sewids are just babies, the player is given the option to spare the critters. Refusing to kill the monster piglets is more or less framed as the right option, even if they are perceived as a potential threat to New Los Angeles, 
but doing so will come back to bite you in the bottom. Leave the sewage to their own devices and another mission will be unlocked later in the game, aptly titled A Painful Lesson. Carl has been mauled and mortally wounded by the now grown pigs and in his dying breaths he begs you to kill the adult creatures off. Basically you're forced to kill the creatures either way so it just comes down to whether or not you want to do it when they're young and save Carl, but on an initial playthrough most players clearly thought they were doing the moral thing by letting the babies live. Number 5. Losing Your Hand Summoner Cult classic RPG Summoner pulls off an especially cruel twist of fate for protagonist Joseph when roughly halfway through the game his left hand is burned off at the behest of the evil demon of darkness. It's a shocking moment but more than that it gives the player a distinct disadvantage for a large chunk of the game given that you're no longer able to wield two-handed weapons or shields. It's especially harsh if you primarily invested in two-handed weapons as now you're suddenly forced to change things up. Either way it results in a significant nerf to both your attacking and defensive capabilities for many hours until Joseph's hand is mercifully restored before the game's final act. If you're fortunate enough to read about Summoner online or in fact just watch this video before playing it, everybody will tell you not to get too reliant on weapons that require two hands and with damn good reason. You're welcome. Number 4 The Forced Final Sacrifice Fallout 3 the climactic twist in the original release of Fallout 3 isn't just cruel, it's cheap and unfair. Your final task is to activate a water purifier and save the local population requiring you to access a radiation filled room. You're given two choices, either sacrifice your own life to enter the room or send fan favourite character Sarah Lyons in to do the job instead. Either way one of you is dying for the quote unquote greater good. This naturally pissed many fans off who were left baffled that they couldn't assign the task to Forks, a super mutant who has radiation resistance as a defining attribute. If you ask him to enter the room, he'll retort with an unconvincing spiel about not wanting to rob you of your so-called destiny. It's awful lazy writing in an attempt to contrive a last minute dramatic sacrifice and fell flat for most players. The response was vitriolic enough that Bethesda later remedied the dilemma with the Broken Steel DLC, which allowed players to have one of their three radiation resistant companions get the job done. But Broken Steel wasn't free, so Bethesda managed to profit off the whole kerfuffle all forcing players to pay extra to get the ending they should have been able to access right out of the box. Number 3 Game Breaking Save Points Bait and Kytos it's extremely important that RPGs offer players save points which allow them to exit the area and return later. Though this is a given in modern RPGs, a basic accessibility feature really, games of yore have been considerably less thoughtful towards players' time, potentially resulting in them being unable to progress. Fate and Kytos allows players to save once boarding the battleship Goldoba, after which they have to deal with one of the game's most difficult boss fights. Given that there's no way to grind on the ship, you're absolutely screwed if you can't beat it and will be most likely for to start the game from scratch. And despite the overwhelming outcry about this online at the time, prequel Bait and Kytos Origins repeated the same cruel trick. At the end of disc 1 you're given a save prompt after which the player is attacked by the Holo Holo Bird. This boss is fierce and given that you have to face it right at the start of disc 2 without any grindable mobs in the area, if you're under leveled you've got no chance of winning. And again without any backup saves there's also no way to improve yourself. There's probably a lesson here about creating a few staggered saves while playing lengthy RPGs but all the same it's reasonable to expect the game not to lock you out of progress through no real fault of your own. Number 2 Scripted Party Wipes Here's an overall trope that's felt tired for a good long while now, scripted party wipes at the end of boss fights. An unwinnable boss fight where you're quickly destroyed in a matter of moments as part of the story is one thing, but one where you actually have to put effort into fighting the boss to have a predetermined win point before the scripted death occurs is hugely frustrating. Dying before this point will result in a genuine game over and will require you to keep fighting to reach the scripted moment where you can finally concede, which beyond being rubbish game design feels like a waste of the player's time. Preparing yourself for a wild boss fight by grinding and stocking your inventory and then realising it was all for the sake of a scripted defeat is immensely unsatisfying. Looking at you Beatrix in Final Fantasy 9. If a game is going to pull this gambit the boss fight in question needs to be short and ideally if you happen to be defeated anyway it simply segs into the scripted sequence. Number 1 Yoshimo's Betrayal Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Arm 
Opinion varies wildly on who the best companions are in Baldur's Gate 2, though a sure fan favourite is bounty hunter Yoshimo up to a certain point at least. Yoshimo can be recruited to your party early in the game, enough that you'll probably grow rather attached to him by the time he's forced to betray the player under the control of the villainous mage John Arenicus. This happens roughly two thirds of the way through the campaign and beyond the devastation of a character you've spent dozens of hours warming to being turned to the dark side, if you didn't know it was coming you've just lost everything he had equipped. Those who know what awaits Yoshimo, however, will typically strip him of his wares before the betrayal even takes place. But because this isn't apparently savage enough, Yoshimo will later ask you to kill him in order to set him free from Arenicus's enchantments, and he can only be granted peace in the afterlife by taking his heart to a priest. Very cruel indeed. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Which of these tricks annoyed you the most? And of course, let us know of any others that we didn't include. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.